Well, I am back in a suit, so that means I did not win the $3,000 six-handed tournament, PLO tournament. I'm commentating it, but that's okay. Should be a lot of fun. Good morning, everyone. I am at Cafe Six at the Palms, at Palms Place for breakfast, which is going to be a turkey burger, because that's what you do at 1 p.m. for breakfast. Um, I stayed up, actually I played the monster stack yesterday, I busted right at the end of the day to my good friend Scott Ball, he decided to get me, he had to get me, he had ace queen, I had ace nine. Um, he's crushing it, he's probably near the chip lead at the end of the day, maybe not. Whenever you have 7,000 people in a tournament, someone is gonna get like 25 starting stacks somehow. I don't even know how that's, that's possible, seems impossible to me. Um, anyway, he's killing it. He killed me. And today I'm playing a $3,000 buy-in six-handed PLO tournament, which is always a lot of fun. That said, if you're playing PLO anywhere near optimally, it ends up being a somewhat nitty game. And that's because when you get down to like 25 or 30 big blind stacks, if someone raises and you three bet and they call, the pot's already like 12 big blinds. And it's hard to not have 30 or 40% equity on most flops with most good hands. So you're just all in. And you know, presumably if they raise and call to three bet and you three bet, you both have good hands, so you're just all in. And that leads to people not wanting to be all in, because as you know in poker tournaments, if you get all in too many times, <laughs> you'll end up losing. So at least it's somewhat nitty poker as stacks get shorter. But during the first few levels, you can certainly just run people over. And that's typically how it goes early in PLO tournaments for me. I think a lot of people play a little bit too cautiously, especially on the river and um, that lets you steal some pots. So that's the plan. I'm gonna go do that and then try to win some nitty short stacked poker. I stayed up all night, I say all night. I stayed up till I guess 3 or 4 a.m. today watching um, Phil Galfond and James Opes PLO videos. Shout out to them for making those on tournaments. So I think I already know what I'm doing, but it's always good to rewatch things like that, especially if you don't really play that much PLO. And I played PLO a long time ago for like a year straight online. Not really tournaments though, mostly cash games. And they are different games, and it's good to make sure you really hammer home the adjustments. So um, that's the plan. I'm gonna go play that, and then if I bust it, I'm gonna commentate it on Poker Go. So that will be on the 27th, I believe, so in a few days. Well, a few days from me recording this, probably well after you guys see this, but that's the plan. All in all, life's good. I'm missing my family. I just got off the phone with Amy, Amy, my wife, and James, my baby. James was laying in the bed. I sang him some songs. He looked at my, the phone because we were using FaceTime. And he smiled a little, and it's oh so sweet. It melts my heart. I miss the boy. I miss my wife a little bit, too. She's nice sometimes. But it's tough being away from family. Much tougher than I thought it would be. But at the same time, I realize I'm out here to do a job, and I'm going to do my absolute best. Because otherwise, it sure isn't worth being away. So. Ugh, being away from family is tough. Just, I just had to get that off my chest. most feared PLO player in all the land is here today. Jesse Yaganuma looking around, he's like, yes, I'm in charge, I'm the boss man. Now he's playing on his phone. So we made day two of the Pot Limit Omaha tournament, which is always great. Unfortunately, I have no chips. Every time I would get a hold of some chips, I figure out a way to lose some chips. So it was a tough day. I have about 15 big blinds going into day two with maybe 125 people left with something like 95 getting paid. So we're close to the money, but in all reality, I have to win a hand to get in the money. Um, I had a fun hand come up where I had ace, ace, eight, six with a suit. Um, a loose aggressive guy potted it before the flop. I repotted it out of my 20-ish big blind stack, so I had about 60% of my stack in before the flop, give or take. 
and um, he called with Jack or Ace Jack Jack six. So he had. I had basically needed to get either a straight or a jack. So the flop came with a jack, which means I'm just basically screwed, right? Because before the flop, I had his side cards. And now on the flop, well, he has my side cards. So I needed exactly an ace to get there. And I drilled the ace on the turn, so that was a whole lot of fun. Um, a little while later, I had a pretty rough spot where I guess I'm supposed to fold. It sure is unfortunate, though, where someone limped. Someone else called in the small blind. I must have checked with something like ace, queen, five, four, with the queen, four of clubs. Flop comes ace, ace, ten, two clubs, we all check. Turn is a low club. Small blind checked, I bet small to try to get called by random aces, to try to get called by random flushes. Checking's also fine though. Um, both players called, so at that point I'm actually pretty unhappy. River was at five, so ace, ace, ten, six, five. So I river to full house. Um, small blind checks. I bet relatively small again. And then this guy who was new to the table, he seemed kind of tight-ish, but he was in pots. I mean, he looked tight, but he was in pots, so that doesn't necessarily mean anything. The way you look doesn't matter if you're in a lot of pots. Um, he raised, I bet like 6,000 on the river, and he made it 15. Small blind folded, and that's such a bad spot, because, like, what is he really raising here? Um, like, would he even raise a 6 for value? I don't know. I could easily have the ace-10, right? I mean, I have ace-5. I could easily have ace-10. Um, I decided to pay, though. It's a weird spot, because I, I have, like, I have all the cards. <laughs> I have the ace, I have the five, I have the, the two clubs. The queen of clubs is reasonable. And um, I decided to pay it off. It It's a nasty spot, though. Maybe I'm just supposed to fold. I mean, I guess it can never be that bad to call off, given I have the blockers and I have a very, very good hand. I mean, I can't have very many better hands. But he had ace-10. He just slow played it right on the flop. So he got me on that one, and that put me back down to my short stack. So <sighs> we got to win some hands today. That's really what it amounts to. And if I do not win all the hands today, I will be commentating the PLO final table tomorrow on Poker Go. So either way, I'll have some action. Well, I am back in a suit, so that means I did not win the $3,000 six-handed tournament, PLO tournament. I'm commentating it, but that's okay. Should be a lot of fun. Um, I went out to dinner with Faraz Jaka and another business partner, Colin, last night, and Faraz was on a hardcore grind of no drinking, no carbs, no sugar. Three things. Who knows what else? And I decided to do the same thing because I need to get my act together. I'm gonna do no drinking and gym most days and eat reasonably well. I'm not gonna be too stringent on that, but I have been relatively busy out here at the World Series and I haven't really gotten a whole lot done in addition to commentating Poker Go and um, playing poker. And I wanna get more done. So instead of having a drink or two at the end of the day, I'm gonna go to bed and then I'm gonna wake up and go to the gym. So. That's my plan. We have three more weeks left in the World Series. There's a lot of poker left to play, and I want to make the most of it. Um, today's PLO tournament, like I said, PLO is an interesting game because very deep, well, sweaty, it's super hot outside. Um, deep in the tournament, there's a lot of incentive in a regular tournament to avoid getting it in, quote unquote, flipping, right? Like ICM implications. But in PLO, even if you're getting it in bad, you're still like 45%. So in theory, the short stack should basically never want to get it in if there are other short stacks at the table. And that causes really interesting dynamics where, I'm not gonna say ICM goes out the window, but it kind of goes out the window because you gotta you have to get some chips at some point, right? So I'm excited to see how these players play. Um, ideally, you want to be the guy with all the chips because if you have all the chips, you just run people over and they should avoid flipping spots. And it's hard to get it in with 60% equity in PLO, like I was saying. So if you just are making it really big pre-flop, it puts them in a really nasty spot. Um, that said, you can still just use a min-raise strategy and force people out on lots of flops, so who knows what's going to happen. PLO's fun, but I think this was my last PLO tournament of the series. My next tournament's going to be in two days, $5,000 buy-in, eight-handed, no-limit hold'em, I think. 
and um, tomorrow I have an off day, so I'm going to spend that day with my parents. My parents come out here most summers, and um, they came out a few days ago. They decided to take a road trip to Colorado to ride on a train. I think it looked like they had a lot of fun, and they come back tonight, so I'm going to hang out with them tomorrow and do whatever they want to do. So that's the plan. I wish I was at this final table, but I'm not. I'm happy to be here. Hello and welcome to Las Vegas. We are here at the 48th Annual World Series of Poker inside the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino. I'm David Tuckman, joined by former WPT Player of the Year, Jonathan Little, and we are here for event number 49, the $3,000 PLO Six Max Tournament, 300, 630 entries uh, at the start of this. We are down to our final seven, which is the unofficial final table. I'm excited to see what happens. PLO is a fun game. Sometimes, Players just lose their minds and blast their money into the pot, and other times we sit here and grind it out. Here we are at the end of the day. Nice and productive. It's a lot of fun. We resume at noon. Good morning. We made day two of the $5,000 buying event. And really, day one was about as carefree as it could possibly be. As silly as that sounds. Um, I really didn't face a whole lot of pressure. I had Davidi Katai two to my left, but um, he was short most of the day, so he didn't really get to mess around too much. Um, one time he did open from second position with queen two of hearts, <laughs> four min rays, and he ended up rivering a pair, and it was good. The queen, I had the middle pair. So that was kind of funny. Davidi Katai likes to play lots of hands, for those who do not know. Um, so anyway, I made day two with about 99,000 chips, which is good for about 1.5 times average, which is great. I did win a little flip versus a short stack. I'm trying to think what all happened yesterday. Really, I just raised a bunch, continuation bet a bunch, three bet a bunch, and didn't really face much action. And that's kind of surprising for a $5,000 tournament, but actually I've been pretty surprised as to how soft the World Series events have been. And I think that's because a lot of the decent regulars have been going other places to play because they rake less, the tournaments they think are even softer, and what that's doing is, is I think it's diluting the pro um, percentage, basically. And instead of having seven or eight reasonable players at each table in a $5,000 buy-in tournament, you end up with three or four, and that's what I've experienced in all of the five and $10,000 events I've played so far. So that's great, <laughs> and um, I'm just gonna continue doing my best. There are, I think, there are, I think, 250 people left, and I think 99 get, pay, get paid. Can't speak this morning, that's not a good sign. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna go play my best and hopefully things go well enough. Oh, today was a fun one. I ended up getting in the top 20% of two different tournaments. In the $5,000 tournament, nothing went right. I just sort of dartled around a bit. Um, I had, uh, what I have? I had middle pair and a flush draw against top set. I elected to play a small pot, but I did not fold the river because um, I, believe it or not, did not block very many of the draws. And um, my opponent took a polarized line. So I called him down, he had top set, that was unfortunate. 
but I didn't lose very many chips, maybe 25 big blinds or so, which is always fine when you have a pair in a flush draw. Then I had a little pot I lost with ace-king against tens. I did not three-bet at preflop. And then I somehow shoved my last big blinds. I guess I had something like 13 big blinds on the button with king nine offsuit. And the big blind had ace six, and just like that, I was out. So that was kind of rough. And then I hopped into the $1,500 tournament. And on the second hand of the day, I got aces then against queens for something like 25 big blinds. I doubled up. Did reasonably well until after dinner break. I raised with ace two of spades from second position, which is a little bit loose, but I was being pretty active at this table. Most of the people are pretty tight. I got three callers, so clearly the tightness concept was wrong. Um, flop came nine, five, two, one spade. They checked me, I bet about half pot. Um, you typically want to be betting your bottom pairs, effectively as a semi-bluff, to protect your equity against random hands like king jack, queen jack, over cards. Maybe you make hands like pocket fours fold, etc. So I bet one player called, in terms of six of spades, now I have a backdoor flush draw. My opponent checked and I shoved for his pot size bet, and he turned a set of sixes. So that didn't work out too well. From there, I had 2,000 chips. I ran it back up to 16,000, and then I found a spot where cut off raise. I jammed my 20 big blind stack with king jack offsuit, small blind cold called with ace queen, and I did not win the flip. <sighs> so two, long, two somewhat deep runs, not quite deep enough, and just like that, I had a rough day. Tomorrow, I'm actually presenting at a seminar put on by Steve Blay of Advanced Poker Training. He asked me if I wanted to be one of the speakers, so I said sure. Also, I'm going to be playing sit and goes with the people attending the conference, so that should be a lot of fun. And then the next day, I'm going to be in the commentary booth. Previously, for the World Series stream, I had been at the break desk, which was a lot of fun. You only have to actually do talking for about 20 minutes, but you're on camera, so you have to look pretty impresentable. I believe on the second, I'm going to be in the commentary booth, so I'm going to be talking almost the whole time, but I don't have to wear pants at all, so that'll be nice. Um, after that, back to playing poker, and it'll be poker for the rest of the summer. Today we're giving the presentation on chipping up without going broke. We're going to do our best. into four. This is a very good angle. Okay. When you're short stack, you just got to go there. Okay. Yeah, I just forget that you're short stacked over here. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Everyone has no chips. Okay. When everyone has no chips, you just have to find a good hand to go with it. Okay. I mean, like, I mean, I folded the A6 before people get back, but there, it was a raise and all in. I did it. That's strong, but Ace Queen's right. She can shove all sorts of like well, saw Ace Four, right? I don't yeah, think that's a stain or anything. I think it's fine. <laughs> Especially with the maniac over here opening. It's fine. To here is my dad deep in the fifteen hundred dollar buy-in tournament. I played and busted over the last few days. They are down to forty-two people. Oh my gosh! World Series bracelet for my dad. And in other news, here's Mr. James after eating Brussels sprouts. He didn't like them. I have no clue where we are in terms of this video blog. I don't remember when I've updated it last. It's been a few days. A lot has happened, as you've probably seen in this video blog. I have, um, we ran a seminar. I think it went very well. Everyone was very happy. One guy was unhappy, but he seemed to be unhappy about everything. So that's okay. Um, what else? My dad took 33rd in a $1,500 buy-in tournament for about 10,000 bucks. It's funny enough, I put him in this tournament for Father's Day. And the last time, well, maybe not the last time, but one other time I bought him into a tournament, 
It was a $300 tournament in Jacksonville. He won it. So that's fun. Um, so life's going well for him. He's running hot. I'm going to meet my mom for breakfast. Then I'm going to commentate in the booth, not in the um, break desk, the final table of the $5,000 buy-in World Series event. It's a party at the Rio, clearly. So that's it. After this commentary day, I am basically done with quote-unquote work. Little baby running around. I'm basically done with work after this commentary day. I will be then playing a lot of poker. There's $1,500 buying events. There's lots of those. And that's pretty much it until the main event. So I will do my best. I'm excited just to get back in the grind of playing all day every day. It should be a whole lot of fun. Dave and uh, Jeff Gross, you and uh, all of your guests out there, David, have done a fantastic job on the break desk to uh, keep us uh, rested here and uh, to also inform the folks of what's going on. There. Here I am with about 20 something thousand chips from a 5,000 chip start right at the very start of the $1,000 buy-in tournament. I made a set versus a guy who had aces and I got paid the maximum. Then I made a flush against a guy who had top pair and, he got, and I got paid the maximum again. Here's Larry Little, my dad, also with a lot of chips. He was going to just play the daily $200 tournament but I convinced him to put in 500 and I put in 500 to play this $1,000 tournament because, you know, why not? We come out to Vegas, we're trying to win a bracelet and, you know, if he wins, he gets retirement money. Retirement money is way better than not retirement money. I am back at the Palms Place. Today was fun. I got off to a great start in the $1,000 buy-in tournament, an amazing start. I think I had something like five starting sacks after the first hour, which is just like unbelievable. I won every hand. I made a set, I made a blush, I made big over bets, and they all got paid. That was a lot of fun. Um, after that, not a whole lot went right. I kind of messed around a bit. I hung around 20,000 for quite a while, which was about five starting sacks, or four starting sacks, I guess. And I was winning it all in, losing it all in, winning it all in, losing it all in. It seems like I was actually winning about two thirds of them. The problem was, is that the ones I was winning were like 15 big blind all ins and then I was losing like 30 big blind all ins. So uh, it was tough. So right near the money, I think 263 paid and with about 270 people left, I was hanging around with about 18,000 chips or so. And a player who was, yeah, not crazy, not loose. He made it 1,800 on the button at 400, 800, and I decided to call 1,000 more in the big blind with four, three of spades. The flop came queen, five, two, two spades. I have a straight flush draw, straight and flush draw. I don't think I had a straight flush draw. I checked, I was gonna check raise all in, but he checked behind. Turn was another two, which is you know, not really a great card for me, but I decided to bet. I could also check raise all in on the turn, but at this point, I don't think I wanna check raise all in on the turn right near the bubble. So I decided to bet 2,000, expecting to get called a decent amount of the time that I was gonna bet like 6,000 on the river if I had to. But he decided to raise to 5,100. So I bet 2,000, he made it 5,100. And now I'm getting great pot odds to call. Could, I could be dead, but he really shouldn't be raising over full houses if he has full houses. So I called, river was something like a nine and I checked and he shoved and I folded. And from there I had, I think about six or 7,000 left. I took the blinds and then I got moved to a new table with about five big blinds on the stone bubble. Actually, we were about four, three or four away from the bubble. But fortunately for me, it only took about three hands to go from 266 people down to 263. I got in the money with my five big blind stack. I took the blinds again. It was actually brutal. It folded around to the small blind who shoved and I looked down at eight two offsuit with five big blinds and I had to fold. I was like, ah. Oh. So anyway, then I found king five suited and that was good enough. And I ran into ace track and I was out. So after a great start to start the day, I ended up with a nice little min cash. Uh, 
luckily enough, my dad's still in the tournament. I decided to have half his action in this one. And um, he actually wasn't going to play, but I said, look, it's a World Series of Poker event. You're going to play the 265 anyway, the, the daily or 235 daily tournament at 2 o'clock. Why not just play the World Series bracelet event for 500? I'll take half. And sure enough, he has two cashers in a row now. Whenever I left, he had about 60,000 chips, good for about... 1.5 times average with about 200 something people left. So my dad's almost certain to have a bracelet before I am. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> it seems like he has been playing some huge pots. I don't know how he's playing such big pots. I'm over here playing a bunch of these tiny pots all in for tw people's 20 people blind stacks. He's just like, yeah, I got ace king. I got it all in and beat jacks or I found kings, got it all in. The guy made a set, lost a hundred thousand chip pot. So somehow he's playing humongous pots and that's fun. I'm happy for him. So, what's going on for the rest of the week? There's a $1,000 tournament tomorrow, then I think a $3,000 the next day. After that, I don't know what's going on. I think the main event is soon, though. The main event, I think, starts on the 8th, and I think today is something like the 3rd. Tomorrow is the 4th. So, it's almost time to try to win $10 million. I hope, I hope they pick me this time. <laughs>